Have you heard about the Imam who has stolen the money? The story starts when one of the small villages in one of the African country, they hired an Imam. This Imam was graduated from Islamic University. And it is very rare to find someone knowledgeable graduated from Islamic University having Islamic knowledge or Islamic scholar to be an Imam of one of the Masajid. And it is very few in African countries. So the people of that village, they decided that every Ramadan during the 30 days or 29 days of Ramadan, each family should invite this Imam for iftar, for food as ihtiram, as a respect, as an honor, as hospitality. So that was the normal practice and the Imam is doing his best in the masjid, doing the lectures, the classes, the courses, educating the people and the community. And in Ramadan he went to the first house, the second day he went to the second house, the third day he went to the third family, and it's like that. So one of the families who invited the Imam, they are only husband and wife. And obviously they are all poor, they are living in a village. After the Imam came, he was waiting in that waiting area or in the hall where they should eat the food. And after eating the food, the Imam said, Jazakumullahu khair, may Allah reward you, and he left. After a while, the wife started looking for the money. She kept money in the same place where the Imam was sitting, but she couldn't find. She is looking under the table, she is looking under the blanket, she is looking under the carpet, she is looking everywhere. Nowhere. The money is gone. So she asked the husband, she said, do you let anyone to come inside the house? He said, no, what happened? She, ca she said that she cannot find the money. She said, yeah, I remember there was money and it was kept at certain place. And no one came in that house except the Imam. And he spent, you know, some time and we were busy making the food and he was sitting alone at that specific room or that specific area. So they both said for 100% sure that no one took the money except Imam because no one else came inside the house. From that moment, the man start avoiding the Imam. He starts feeling bad towards the Imam. Every time he goes to the masjid, he is avoiding the Imam. He is not trying to make any salam or any contact with the Imam. He prays in the corner or, or he prays and then leaves immediately without being in touch with the Imam. Having that feeling that how come an Imam, how, how can he, he uh, just get that kind of courage to take the money? Well, the year passes and the next Ramadan came. And as a normal practice of the people of the village, that everyone should invite an Imam for a day, for iftar. So one day he went to the first family, the second day he went to the second family, until the turn of this family who lost the money, they now have to invite the Imam. But the man is not comfortable. He says, how can I call the Imam who came last time in my house and he's stolen the money? So I'm not comfortable. So the wife, she was a righteous and pious wife. She came and she said, listen, maybe the Imam was in need of the money. Maybe he needs you know, this money for, for something. So let's forgive him for the sake of Allah and let's invite him. Just let it go. So the man agreed and he said, okay, I do agree with you. Let's invite the Imam. Imam came to this family. And again, he came normally. Assalamu alaikum. He said, and after the food, after the iftar, he just want to leave. But the Imam saw that the man is still not comfortable. He is kind of like talking very, uh, in, a, in a very not usual way, not normal way. Like it's only like few words that he is talking to the Imam and quite all the time, not trying to make any, any topics or open any topics or ask him any questions that, that he will benefit from Imam. So the Imam said, are you okay? So the man couldn't take it anymore. He said, Imam, I want to tell you something honestly. From the last year till now, 
didn't you realize that I am avoiding you? I'm not saying salam to you. I'm not coming and talking to you. So the Imam said, yes, I realize, but I didn't get enough time to come and talk to you, to ask you what's happening because I was also busy here and there. But yes, I, I did realize that you are kind of not very close to me anymore. So he said, Imam, I'll be honest with you. Last time we invited you and we kept some money in the same room and we were preparing the food and you were sitting alone. And after you left, we couldn't find the money and we swear that no one else came inside the house except you. At that moment, at that time, Imam's eyes become reddish. The tears start coming out from his eyes. And he said, why you didn't talk to me? He said, how can we talk to you? We were feeling shy. And we, we, I'm sh we are sure that no one took the money except you. So the Imam started crying and he said, yes. I took the money. At that moment, it was the shocking moment for everyone. For this man and for the wife who, who's, who's in the other room and, and hearing the conversation and listening to everything. It was shocking for them. That the Imam is admitting that yes, he took the money. But what the Imam said? The Imam said, I'm not crying because you accused me and you are sure that I took the money. I am crying because of other thing. I was sitting in the same room and the money were kept at that side. And the wind start blowing and the window is open as it is open right now. And the money start flying everywhere because of the wind. So I got up quickly and I start collecting the money and I was waiting for you when you will come. So I saw a front of me a Quran and I opened the Quran. I kept the money inside the Quran and I closed it and I kept it. The reason I'm crying because for the entire year, none of you opened the Quran and read the Quran. If you just open the Quran and read any verse from it, you would find the money. So I am crying that my own people in this village they didn't read the Quran for the entire year. I'm not sad because you accused me, but I'm sad that you are completely abandoned the Quran for the next year. And this also, my brothers and sisters, applies to all of us. In Ramadan, we only touch the Quran and read the Quran in the month of Ramadan and on weekly basis or certain occasions. We do not want to be like this person and his wife who abandoned the Qur'an for the entire year and he was thinking that the Imam took the money. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who read the Qur'an, recite the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an and ponder upon the Qur'an and implement the Qur'an in our life. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.